Okay, so now in this video, we will be adding a tagging to our opponent AI, okay? So, right here at the top, add a if condition. Add curly brackets, and then after this, if, add an else condition, and inside this else condition, this whole if condition will go, which is for the player movement like this, okay? And now, in this if, we will perform a tag. So, if the player is attacking, then the player will attack, and else the player will move towards the player all right first of all we will check if the player is within attack radius and also the player is active so for checking if the player is active or not we can use this line from here paste it right here at the top then for checking that if the player is in the attack radius or not we will say vector 3 dot distance we will check the distance from the player actually it is players so from player dot position till the opponent position and we're gonna say if that is less than or equals to the attack radius okay as you know that we have already created attack radius which is set to 2 so now the player can attack because now the player is in the attack radius and also the player is active so now the opponent can attack okay first of all we will stop the opponent from moving and play the idle animation so for, in order to do that we just need to uh, say animator.set pool set walking to false all right when you do that then we will attack but we will only attack if the cooldown time has passed okay so we will say time dot time and we will say minus last attack time is greater than the attack cooldown so if this is the case then we will choose a random attack index in order to do that we will say integer random attack index equals to random dot range let's pass 0 then pass attack animations dot length all right after this we will perform the attack so in order to do it we will first of all check if the player is not taking any damage because if the player is taking damage then we will not perform the attack okay right here call that and pass the random attack index to it after this what we're gonna do we will uh, play hit damage animation on the player, but for now we don't have any method set up on our fighting controller for that So we just gonna leave a comment for ourselves right here Okay, so this will basically now perform the attack Now right here at the top We will say if the attack count is equals to the random number then what we want to do we will set the attack count to 0 and we will call the create random number again or let's just ignore this line for now okay this is for the next video for now just leave this in comments right now let me explain what we did right here in this so let's start from this if condition right here player i dot game object dot active self it checks if the game object associates with the i player is active in this scene okay it to simply check if the player is active in this scene okay or any of the player is active in the scene for now we just only have one so just one player it makes sure that that player is active then after that 
in the vector 3 dot distance transform position then player i dot position is less than or equals to attack radius it checks if the distance between the opponent position and the player position is less than or equal to attack radius this ensures that the oppo uh, opponent is within the attacking range of the player okay then right here in this line we just simply uh, stop the walking animation and stop the players then right here what we do is first of all this if uh, if condition checks if enough time has passed since the last attack it calculates the time difference between the current time which is time dot time and the time when the last attack occurred which is last attack time and then if this difference is greater than the specified attack cooldown then the condition is met and the opponent can perform an attack after this right here this line choose a random attack index within the range of available attack animation it uses random dot range to generate a random integer between 0 and the length of the attack animation array then this if con uh, condition or statement check if the opponent is not currently taking damage okay and then if the condition is true it calls the perform attack method passing in the randomly chosen uh, value this ensure that the opponent only attack if not currently taking damage that's it all right now if we save this and get back right here and then play the game it will show when uh, an error whenever it plays the attack animation you will notice as you can see it shows this error and this is because of the events uh, on the animation okay if we select in Kazama right here on each of the animation we have this event and each of this event has a method applied and in that method we play these uh, attack effects okay and as you know that these attack effects are not assigned so that is why it is showing this error so let's go ahead and assign these attack effects okay so if we click on Jin Kazama click on animator let's check the first animation which is this one attack 5 combo b5 okay if you double click on it this is the animation let me drag and drop Jin Kazama there okay as you can see using the right leg it attacks the first okay so if you open up Jin Kazama hips right leg right foot then right to base in here we will add our first effect okay so let's go in here hit effect prefabs hits and for the kick actually let me delete that open up eddy and in eddy right here in the right leg we play this animation which is this one so we can just simply duplicate it and then we can just move it from there to this right toe base of Jin Kazama and as you can see it is still right there first of all let's rename it and then you can move it from there okay this is the animation so let me move it actually you can actually select the animation and click on reset and when you click on reset it will be directly moved to this position as you can see okay now let's check the second animation of Jin Kazama select Jin Kazama first of all okay and then select the animation there it is okay so on second animation Jin Kazama attacks using the let me check okay it attacks using the left hand so select Jin Kazama let me close the left leg open up spine spine 1 spine 2 left shoulder left arm left forearm and left hand now in the left hand we will add the same effect as we did right there for Eddie which is this effect too okay so I'm gonna duplicate it 
and drag and drop it right here in the left hand of the Jin Kazama and then uh, select this second effect which we duplicated first of all rename it and then reset its transform it will be automatically moved to this position okay as you can see this is our second one now select Jin Kazama click on animator guys make sure that you follow me step by step okay so now if you click on uh, attack 3 animation right here if we move it forward as you can see Jin Kazama attacks using the right leg okay so in Jin Kazama let's open up the right up leg this is this is it okay so let me duplicate this effect one and name this as effect three okay so this will be our effect three which is set up already now let's select the attack four animation and in the attack four animation it is also the right leg so this time this is the same right leg let me close eddy now and in here this is the right leg so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna use some other effect now okay so if you go inside hits let's for example use this effect okay so drag and drop it in the right toe end actually not right to end right toe base okay then click on it click on prefab unpack completely name this as effect 4 then as you know that we need to uh, increase its size to 5 uh, false this play on awake and then instead of destroy on stop action select none that is all we have to do okay it is playing there so we need to reset the transform of it so that it plays in that direction all right so now click on Jin Kazama let's add all of the effects now the okay that effect was right here the second effect okay so select Jin Kazama let's add the first one then the second one is right here then third and at last fourth that's it when you do that now we need to set them up as well okay so click on animation let's start from the first one which is attack 3 combo 3 if we play this animation okay right here it is we want to play this right here so I'm gonna move this event forward right there okay this was for the attack 4 now if we select this second animation which is attack 4 combo 3 this is the event let me actually click on this it is attack 5 combo b5 okay attack 5 combo b5 here it is okay select Jin Kazama and select this attack 5 combo b5 click on scene let's play it here it is okay we will uh, this event is perfectly fine if we select the second one it is attack 4 combo 3 attack 4 combo 3 which is this one so select Jin Kazama select this animation attack 4 combo 3 select scene and let's move this animation forward I think this event is perfectly fine as well now select Jin Kazama select the third animation it is attack right high kick B attack right high kick B which is this one select Jin Kazama make sure that that animation is selected move it forward okay we will move this event a little bit right there okay now the last one select Jin Kazama select the fourth animation it is attack 3 combo 3 so select Jin Kazama attack 3 combo 3 let's play it okay it is set up correctly as well now so everything is set up now let's go ahead and play the game okay it is playing the animations perfectly fine as you can see
All right. It looks good. If we select the fourth one, which is this one, so let me increase its size to seven. Okay, and also select the third, uh, second effect. It is already seven. Okay, that's it. Okay, that is all we have to do for Jin Kazama. So we now have the attacking and the effects. Now, what we're gonna do in the next video is we will damage our player and also we will allow the player to damage the opponent as well okay so for that see you guys in the next one